This is a short talk about Great Western Railway platform lamps, of which we have a very fine selection here on the West Somerset Railway. They aren't marked GWR, but they're absolutely characteristic of Great Western Railway stations. These days they're just part of the scene at stations like Luenka, and we don't really notice them as part of the overall picture, but it is perhaps useful to take a moment to give them their place. There are four types. The works diagram that you're looking at now from Swindon, if you read it across from the left to the right, there is a six foot size, uh, an eight foot size, and in each case those are the amount of the lamp that's out of the ground. Uh, in each case they have a substantial base that disappears below ground. And then there's a much larger version, a yard lamp, which looks like one of the eight foot sets of lamps, but with the column raised up on an extra fluted section of column to make it much higher. Presumably that's because the light in a locomotive yard would need to shine down from above the locomotive and there was a need to get the lamp up that high. There's also a fourth type which consists of the other types but made in concrete. The Great Western Railway had a significant concrete works at Taunton and they knocked out these lamps in concrete which we also have an example or two of and I'll show you those in a moment. So let's start with the six foot lamp. Those are to be found at Minehead Station, at Dunster Station, Blue Anchor, and at Degumba. The eight foot versions we have examples of uh, at Bishop's Lydiard, at Crocombe, and at Watchit particularly. And the yard lamps we have, I think, three examples of in Minehead Station, one in the Loco Yard proper, and two by the turntable. The concrete lamp we have two examples of at Stagumba Station. But let's step back for a moment and do a little bit of history. If we look at with Somerset railway stations around the turn of the 19th to the 20th century, around 1900. You'll see that here we're looking at Bishop's Lydiard and Washford stations. And what we see is that they appear to have oil lamps. So they have a column and a lantern top. But as far as we can tell, these were fitted with oil lamps. Now sometime in the 1930s, we think, these were generally lost and replaced by a very high concrete lamp standard. Uh, there are examples at Washford, and here are some examples shown at Blue Anchor on opening day of the present West Somerset Railway in 1976. They fairly quickly after the railway reopened had become to decay and became dangerous and bits of the upper bracket, certainly at Blue Anchor, fell onto the station. And so by the early 1980s it was decided that these needed to be removed. Some stations like Stagumba had had to make do with very weak paraffin lamps hung from hooked posts right up until the time that British Railways closed the service on the 2nd of January 1971. I think we sometimes forget how dark the countryside was in the days before bright car headlights and universal electric light. And the hunt was on for replacement lamps. Now fortunately Minehead, as we can see, had mostly retained its lamps. They weren't ideal for fixing uh, BR totem signs onto, as you can see from this picture. That's not really the, the most attractive way to fix a totem sign onto a lamp. 
Minehead has had one or two extras, but Minehead was mostly supplied. The lamps at Blue Anchor came from a variety of sources, but we had a big lump that came from a museum in Bristol that was disposing of some stock that it had kept. They were very difficult to install at Blue Anchor. The thing to remember at Blue Anchor is that the, the station is built effectively in a V-shaped cutting in the rock with ballast dropped in the bottom of the V and the track set on that and then platforms either side. And when we got to the edges of the platform where we wanted to dig a hole to put the lamp in, we scraped away the tarmac and underneath that we found pretty much solid rock. So the lamps at Blue Anchor aren't going anywhere anywhere quick. They're set on solid rock. Over the years we've gathered in lamps from a variety of places. Dunster has some six foot lamps, two of which came from the, br the bridge on the wall pub in Wadebridge. They were painted gold and they had electric lamps stuck out the side of them. And fortunately a few years ago the pub decided that it had enough of them and we were fortunate enough to hear about that and did a deal with the landlord and brought those to Dunster. We are seen here having them shot blasted at Serdic Foundries in Chard because removing all that old paint is a real pain. Of course after you've shot blasted something you end up with a surface that's in metallic terms extremely clean and therefore ready to rust. And so we in the back of the van, as soon as they came out of the shop blasting, we painted them with peroxide and then delivered them to Dunster and they form a pair of the lamps at Dunster. So they're good to have. Further down the line, the lamps have come from various places. Some of the other lamps that we have at Blue Anchor came from Star Cross in Devon and were swapped around the railway so that we have consistent sets of lamps at different stations. One that needs to be recorded particularly is the lamp we have at Stigumba Station, which after a period of negotiation with St Ives Town Council, we were allowed to recover from a footpath above St Ives Station. And that is seen here being dug out of the ground and then taken to our van to bring back to Somerset. This was a six foot lamp that rather strangely had had a length of pipe force fitted onto the top of it to make it into something like an eight foot lamp. But anyway, that is here that is back at Stigumba. It, it is possible to have new lamps cast and we were pleased to find a matching lamp from a group of castings that the Gloucester and Warwickshire Railway were having cast for Broadway Station. And so the matching lamp here on the other side of the crossing at Stigumba is in fact a modern casting, although you'd never know. The pattern on the lamps, and let's look at them a bit more closely, is known as Icanthus leaf. That's the semi-Egyptian design, which semi-classical Egyptian design, which the Great Western Railway were very keen on. The lamps lend themselves to very attractive painting in the two-tone style that are often used on Great Western Railway stations, so what's known as light stone and dark stone, so the slightly orangey earthy colours, and it's possible to paint them simply or to pick out those, the fluting and the different designs on them attractively in different colours. That plainly can also be done with the later British Rail Western Region chocolate and cream. Finally we come to what's on the top of the lamp, there were quite a range of different lamps used by the Great Western Railway. Often the Great Western were quite keen on lantern style lamps and several of our stations have those. Stagumba has that, Crocombe has that lantern style. British Railways had different types of lamps that they used and Minehead has the sort of sombrero style. And the final feature of Great Western Lanterns is that generally on the side facing the train in that glass panel there would be what's known as a lamp tablet which would be a piece of glass with a cloudy white background and blue lettering. 
through which the lamp would shine and therefore you would have an illuminated station sign at night. And we have those on a number of our stations, particularly at Willerton and Crocombe Heathfield. That's been a little look at GWR lamp posts and lamp tops on the West Somerset Railway, which I hope has helped you know a little to look out of the carriage window when you next come for a ride with us. Thank you for listening.